I'm going to use the image browser to open up a nice high resolution MR image to demo how histograms work and some of the features of histogram. Let me remove the image browser. So here we have a high resolution image. We've removed most of the non-brain tissue. Uh, what we have left is mostly white matter, uh, gray matter, and CSF fluids. The histogram menu is in, under the analysis. So we'll pick the histogram feature and you see the graph of the histogram being presented here. This histogram defaults to having 100 bands and it ranges from the minimum value that we saw in the image to the maximum value, at least in the display. Uh, to make this look better, I'm going to add more bands and decrease the range a bit so we can cover the full graph a little better. And then we'll recalculate that. While it's recalculating, notice we're excluding the zero because there were a large number of zeros. Now you see we have a very nice histogram, uh, and as I move the cursor uh, into the graph, you see a couple of white lines, and you see numbers. The numbers show how many uh, voxels we have in each of the bins, and the bins were size 10 since we ran from 300 to 3,000. If I move to one of these uh, big distributions and click on it, I put an anchor there, and if you notice in the image, uh, the color that I had there highlights all the pixel values that were in that range. Uh, in this case, this is a white matter distribution, we assume. And if we click this, this is a gray matter distribution. And over here, this little small one seems to be mostly in CSF. Uh, beyond just setting an anchor, you can set an anchor and do a shift click and highlight a range. In this case, we're highlighting from the bottom of the distribution between these of these two big distributions up to above this one. We can move to this side, shift click. Uh, before we had white matter, now we have gray matter. If we set a new anchor around here someplace uh, and click down here, we see mostly we have CSF. So this is a very nice way to highlight ranges to see what in the image correspond to what image ranges. Another way to highlight is to move the cursor to a starting point, for instance here, and press the shift key, set the anchor, and press the shift key and you can drag to highlight. In this case, we highlighted white matter, and, this, and we can drag this way and highlight gray matter. If we set the, the anchor again, we can shift and move over here. And we might be interested in what was this stuff right at the end. It looks like it's mostly uh, out at the edge of the brain. And then we pick up CSF, pick up gray matter, pick up white matter. Now we've highlighted the entire image. I, I'm doing this to show that the overlay color that we placed over here, uh, we can adjust the transparency of. And notice as I adjust it, we can begin to see the image beneath, and we can turn it off completely. So if you need to be able to see through the overlays, this is a good way to do it. There's another feature of the histogram program is that uh, we can adjust the histogram or have the histogram calculate within a region of interest only. So I'm going to load a region of interest that I previously defined. This region of interest is a small sphere. You can see it's spherical in these three views. And now when we go to the histogram and we say use ROI and calculate, it calculates very quickly because now we're calculating a small number of voxels. In this case, it's mostly if we highlight white matter, gray matter, and then some CSF. So if I move the ROI down into this range, uh, if we wanted to sort of center it over ventricles, we might take a look at how to do this better and look to see what we've got here and calculate. Now we see that the distribution is heavily weighted towards CSF. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me. Bring this up to the center of the view. And if we move this region of interest off into mostly white matter and recalculate, we see that we're getting mostly white matter and nearby gray matter. So this is a nice feature uh, in that we can uh, highlight things within a region of interest. So we can use a region of interest as sort of the blocking range and highlight things within it. And if you wanted to generate a real region of interest for what you'd highlight with here, you could press another this button and do so. Uh, more often we find that we want to generate the region of interest from the full image in which we might highlight a range like that, uh, say generate ROI, then we'd make this large ROI. 
we have the option to make the region of interest that we highlight be different colors so the ROI you generate would be associated with the color you picked very nice feature so you can generate up to all the color lists we have for ROIs there's another uh, feature about this graph that's quite nice and that is to we can look at not just the uh, pixel values from the image but we can look at the rate in the histogram or we can look at a cumulative histogram this is what the rate looks like for this particular histogram I'll highlight one of these points and go back and look at the data and we see that the rate of change of this curve was highest right in this range where the curve steepest which we might have predicted uh, another nice feature is the cumulative values in the histogram so wherever you click you get the total number of voxels between the beginning range and the range you have uh, so this is voxels between, in this particular case, 0 uh, and, and this bin range of 1820 to 1830. There's quite a few voxels you can see. And then this is all of the voxels in that range. So if you want to know the median, we come halfway down. This is the point where half the voxels are within the range of 0 to 3000. In this case, uh, we see that number. So this is a nice way to look at median within using a histogram. Let's go back to the data. Oops, I forgot to clear this boy off. And I like the red pointer. So there's a couple things you can do with the histogram. If you'd like to do analysis that's not provided here, we can export the histogram and you can send it to the desktop if you like. And we'll do that. And if we look over here, now there's a his text file. That's that histogram. There's a bin number on the left and the number of voxels at those values on the right. And this can be loaded directly into uh, Excel for further analysis. Uh, one of the last features I wanted to show is that uh, we can take a picture of the histogram. So if you click on this button, I've set it up so it puts the picture on the desktop. And you see that over here. If we open it up, uh, on the Macintosh it opens up in preview but whatever program can read a PNG type graphic file. You can include these in PowerPoint and, and uh, work with them in your publications as well. One last thing about the histogram is that the window is actually resizable so if you'd like a nicer or bigger picture you can do it that way uh, and then take the picture. Uh, if you make it too small so that it won't graph we force it back to its original starting point. So these are most of the features uh, for histogram in Mango. We continually upgrade these, so you'll have to read through the manual to check to see what the latest features are.